Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Transport Fever 2. In this tutorial I'm going to look at how you can make pretty quick money in 1850. 1850 has early tech, you have vehicles which are slow, most of which are still horse-drawn carriages, so fast transport is not really an option. So how do you make money? Well, towns always do it for me. Connecting two towns and then making sure you feed your train stations are always the best way to do it. Or at least a guarantee that you're going to be at least getting some money. In this tutorial, I'm going to be tying Laclade and Sutton together. Laclade is a pretty boxy town, which is going to make it quickly uh, accessible for buses or trams, depending on your preference. And over here in Sutton, it's again a quite boxy shape. I'm on an 1850 map start, uh, Europe type, in case you're interested. But this can work for any given map. Now I'm going to start with quite literally the end in mind. What's going to be my end game? Not what's going to be 1851, 1852, but what's it going to look like in 2000? In 2000, Sutton might very well be a hub of activity, which is going to get connected to Laclade, but also to Axminster. There might be a train running to Boston. There might be a train coming in from uh, Ashby. So I don't want a terminal station over here. Start with the end in mind. What sort of train station would be most useful here? I think it's going to be one which has multiple tracks. To make sure that there is room, I'm going to not build this thing right inside of town, but slightly on the edge of it, so that the town can still sort of organically develop around it. So let's start with a train station. This is not going to be a terminus station, which means that it ends there. This would be very difficult to tie into, for example, Boston, if I were to orient it towards Laclade. So that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it a standard passenger station. I could already set up four tracks. That could work, but it also dramatically increases the cost of your station. This is currently 572. If I go, just go for one track, it's going to be 170. And considering that there's only a budget of 5 million, I need to be a little careful with my funds. So this is where I'm going to place my station. The other one in Leclade is going to be a terminal station because I think that the uh, Sutton place is going to be a hub so that Laclade is going to be a sort of end point. So that can be a terminus station and this one can actually be pretty deep inside the town. I'm going to orient it like this. This way it already covers a part of the town and has easy access or easy room to also add a tram or other passenger feeding service. So there's my second station. Now let's collect the two. I'm first going to go with a pretty wide approach, seeing how far I need to go. You could have the game uh, connect them together, but it doesn't always work. Now it's a pretty easy direct stretch on this map. On your map, it might be hilly, it might be uh, difficult to navigate. If there's a lot of hills, if there's water in the way, I really would not recommend that you go through that terrain. Tunnels and bridges are really expensive. Okay, so far spent about 800,000. Now to make this uh, as efficient as possible, I'm immediately gonna go for a double track setup to make sure that I can quickly have a second train operate on this uh, line. Because the faster transport arrives, the more frequent a service is available, the more likely people are to make use of it. They don't like waiting on the train for, well, I suppose months in this game. So these are going to get tied together like that. Okay, now, signals. In case you're not familiar with the signals, I recommend you watch the tutorial that I have on the signals. Link below in the description. For now, I'm going to set up a couple of uh, rail segments don't need to be too many of them, because I think I might have three, four, uh, maybe five trains at best running on this line. There. Now we're going to set up the actual line. New line starting in Laclade and ending, for the moment, over here in Sutton. I'm saying for the moment, because this could very well be a line that starts in Laclade and goes all the way to Boston, which is over here. So for the moment, this is the way that it's going to be. 
So this is the Laclade Sutton line. Now, it's nice to have Laclade with its um, train station almost inside the town. And as you can see by the white coverage, it has a pretty good range already. It doesn't quite cover everything. And since these do appear to be housing and commercial buildings, you do want to them covered. Because people from Sutton, for some reason or another, like to go shopping in other towns. This is true for every town in the game. They just go to a different town to shop there. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this station over here in Laclade has a way of getting more people. For that, I'm going to go with a building, uh, a bus or tram station. I'm just going to go with a simple bus station. I am not going to use a tram for this. Keep in mind that it needs to be pretty close to the train station. And you can see that blue line which is being connected from the train station to the bus station. That That is the road that people are going to take if they're walking towards the train station. So this one goes over here. And for Sutton, I'm going to have to do a little bit more work because this train station is still far outside of town. Since it is so far out of town, I can still decide how and where I want this tram station. And I'm going to place it very close to the station. And you can see it's not just one line going to the train station, it's several. Currently it's three. And I believe that that speeds up the amount of pa uh, passengers that are going to be moving towards that new place. So people have uh, more different paths to go from the tram station, bus station to the train station. All right, that doesn't quite cover much. It covers a little bit of the town. The rest, tough luck. Not really. We're going to save these people. Bus tram stop. I always built two of these on the opposite side of the roads because I want to have one route in a clockwise manner and I want to have one route in a counterclockwise manner. And the reason for this is that sometimes you have uh, somebody over here who just needs to go there. They're too tired to walk, uh, maybe they're too old to walk, you don't exactly know what the reason is for the person in game to do this, but I've seen it happen. If you would only have a um, single line that starts here and then goes there, there, here, round to there, and then here. Then the person that jumps onto your vehicle over here is going to take up that seat for the whole track, the whole line. I don't want that. Whereas if I have a line going um, counterclockwise and one going clockwise, I can have passengers choose the most efficient route. All right then, for Sutton, I'm going to start over here, Sutton Annex. Next is Main Street. North Road, St. John's Road, Clove Road, or sorry, Grove Road, and then you can decide to once again attend Main Street because I still have the other uh, station on the other side of the road. This is a um, counterclockwise line. I usually abbreviate that and I call that the Sutton CCW for counterclockwise. I'm also going to have one going the other way, starting here, going there to Main Street then to Grove Street. Let me change the color so you can see the distinction. Then over here in St. John's Road, North Road, and once again to Main Street. This one is a clockwise. So this is going to be Sutton CW, clockwise. All right, so now you have your line. Now we need a vehicle. For that, I'm going to use the Road Depot. Doesn't really matter where you set it up. You can set it right here. Uh, you could set it all the way out there doesn't really matter, so long as the vehicles can somehow reach it. I'm going to set it up a little bit outside of town, so that if I want to use it later, I can also use it for other vehicles, so it's a little bit more in a central position. All right, vehicles. Make sure they're passenger vehicles. People are not cargo, or at least, well, I suppose some public rail works consider them cargo, but the game really thinks that you need to consider them as passengers. So, a couple of stagecoaches. Keep in mind, the capacity is only four. There can only be four people inside your stagecoach. I'm going to have two on each line. So two of these, and you set them up for the Sutton counterclockwise. Then, buy two more, and set these up for the clockwise route. Now, they're going to start out immediately, all after another. 
but fortunately this spaces out over time as they wait a little bit of time at each station. So initially you might have four stagecoaches over here, but it's going to spread out. The stagecoaches, or the buses, or trams, whatever you have, will also pick their own terminal. This means that the uh, Sutton Clockwise is going to pick this terminal, and the Sutton Counterclockwise is going to pick the other terminal, so they don't have to start waiting for each other. Alright, so that considers Sutton done. Then, back to Laclade, where we still have to set up a couple of bus stops, otherwise people cannot get on. Same signal, or same um, uh, operating method, have them on each side of the road. And since this place is a little smaller, I'm only going to go with a couple of stops. Again, starting here, this is going to be my clockwise line to the drive, to Grove Road, and to Church Lane. Uh, oops, that's the wrong one. I want this one. Laclaid, um clockwise. And this was the Laclaid to Sutton line. Next, another line going in the opposite direction. Again, making sure that people have always the most opportune route to go to their position, go to their destination. So this is the like laid counterclockwise. And by doing it this way, I still need to do a couple of vehicles. You can get those all the way from over here, but it's in game time going to take them quite a few months to get there. So for them, considering that road depot is not going to be too expensive, I'll just set up another one. Again, I start out with two vehicles and I add more as necessary. These are Laclade counterclockwise. And these two are going to be Laclade clockwise. So now I have the vehicles on the uh, interior. And these are just there to get a little bit of profit. But mostly to supply passengers to the train station. To the Laclade Sutton line. That is where the money is going to be made. But I still need to make sure that there's a train there, because there currently is not. I'm going to put my depot a little ways outside of the uh, tracks there. Now I have one coming in from this side. So the train, I want that to continue on its way. So the first one's going to go that way. And then I'm going to hook up the other way, like that. Now if you want to, you could use signals here. So that a new train does not interfere with an already running train. And I'm going to do that. So I'm going to set up one signal here. And one signal over here. This way trains will not uh, join the main line. If there are other vehicles already operating on it. And if they are very close to the depot. Because a new train is always going to be empty. Whereas a train that's coming in from either Laclade or Sutton is carrying passengers. And passengers are money. I need those guys. Okay then, time to add a vehicle. Doesn't really matter what you pick. Currently I only really have the uh, D1 slash 3 to go with. So let's buy two of those. A couple of stagecoaches again. These only have a capacity of 6. That's not a whole lot. That's 18 people per train. Doing 40 kilometers an hour with a length of 29 meters. It is not very impressive, but it's the best that I can afford. I'm going to go with two of these units and set them up on Laclade Sutton. All right, so far I have spent about 2.8 million. You're not going to make 2.8 million in the first year. That is just not possible. Because people first have to realize that there is a line going from Sutton to Laclade or otherwise, and that there is in fact something to do in the other town. Now you can really see the first passenger over here. These are on the counterclockwise line. Oh, sorry, on the clockwise line. And they're waiting to go to, well, whatever other stop. Let's see where they want to go. Click on a passenger. They want to go to the shop. What shop is that? That's the shop in Laclade. So this is one of the passengers who wants to go all the way to the other side. Over here, we also have a couple of passengers. And I would not be surprised if they want to go shopping in Sutton. They want to go to a shop... And that shop is indeed in Sutton. It's going to take these stagecoaches a little bit of time to gather people over here at the train station. And currently, the trains are probably running empty or very, very nearly empty. So the first couple of months of a year, potentially the first two years, are going to be not profitable. It simply won't happen. 
because it's going to take people time to get either to the train station or from one train station to the other. But sooner or later, and in this case sooner, there are going to be a lot of people waiting at this train station. I already have 40 people waiting here in Leclade. And they all want to go to Sutton. Unfortunately for them, the train that's about to arrive only has 18 seats. So some of these people are going to be left behind. That's unfortunate, but at least I know that there is enough demand to potentially buy another train. Or multiple trains. And with those, make more money. With the train over here, train 1 window, you can see that currently it's making a loss of 64,000. But the moment that it picks up the, the passengers over here in Leclade and deposits those in Sutton, where currently we only have three passengers waiting, it is going to tick up. Now, considering that there's a load of passengers at these stations, I am going to get a lot more stagecoaches. The alternative would be to use trams. Um, that's going to be a different tutorial, the comparison of trams versus uh, just passengers or uh, stagecoaches. But for now, I'm going to add a couple more to Sutton and a couple more to Sutton counterclockwise, or clockwise, the other one. Now, one after another, we're dropping off passengers here. And these are all going to start waiting for the Sutton train to come in. Currently, I'm down to 1.6 million. I have a loss of 3.3 million, but most of that is investments. Only very little of that is running costs and a loan interest that I'm paying. Pretty soon, we should be seeing the train come in. There it is, train one. Currently on a loss of 110,000, but it is carrying 18 passengers. And by the time that it gets here, there might be another 18 passengers waiting. Because these stagecoaches could be depositing additional transport or additional uh, passengers. Here it comes. A couple more passengers have just arrived right in the nick of time. And there you go. That was a hundred thousand profit. So he's still minus seven thousand, but that's because in this year it really hasn't been transporting much. And in the previous year, it was just transporting nothing. It was running mostly empty. The second train is also about to arrive, also carrying 18 passengers. And while there are not enough passengers over here at the moment, there are another couple more being dropped off by the stagecoach that just arrived. So at least it won't be running entirely empty. And there's another 100,000. There's another stagecoach coming in with another four passengers. Dropping these off. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a whole bunch of people waiting here. Yeah, we've got 54 people waiting to go from Leclay to Sutton. So right now I'm going to add another train. And yes, it is going to cut into my very, very meager profits at the moment. But it will pretty quickly become very profitable. This one I'm going to send out with 30 capacity. It's going to cost me 953,000. Which is a lot of money, considering I only have 1.6 million left. But it will make a lot of money, because I know that there's demand for this service. Currently, there's 12 people waiting here. There's another stagecoach coming in with another 4 people. So, um, it's very likely that by the time that the train arrives, there will be more people waiting here. You can see that these people are disembarking from the stagecoach, and currently waiting at Sutton. And there's another one coming in. And this just continues. Now, if you click here on the bottom right-hand side for line statistics, you can see which lines are making money and which ones are not. Leclade Sutton is not making a lot of money, but that is currently down to my new train, which is not making any money yet. It is about to arrive and is about to pick up the 24 and probably a few more passengers that are waiting here. The other two trains are profitable, 67,000, uh, this one's a little low because it's not carrying a full haul. And the passenger lines inside of town are also making a little bit of money. Not a whole lot, but there is a bit of money going on. Now, I already upgraded the amount of passengers over... Or the amount of transports over here in Sutton. And you can do the same thing for Leclade. Now, sometimes you see the small icon that says it's usually lesser than 50. 
This one has a load of people. Leclerc Clockwise is looking at 50 passengers that need to go somewhere. And they all want to go to Leclerc Transfer. This is Leclerc Transfer. They would really only be wanting to go here, or at least most likely, if they were waiting for a train. So I'm going to add a couple more transports, a couple more stagecoaches, that is, to the Leclerc lines. A couple more to Leclerc counterclockwise, and a couple more to Leclerc clockwise. And this way I know that my trains are also going to be even more profitable, that is, if they weren't full to begin with, because right now they're always bound to be full. Now train 3, the newest addition to the line, is almost about to arrive. It is carrying 30 passengers. Keep in mind that is almost double the amount of train uh, 1 and 2, which are only carrying 18. And it seems that, once again, the amount of passengers going here is slowly going up and up and up. Let's see how much train 3 brings in. Hundred and seventy one thousand and despite running empty for a bit it has already made a significant chunk of profit in 1950 sorry 1852 now if I don't spend anything for the rest of the year um, I am probably going to remain profitable and keep in mind that I have already done an investment of 95,000 had I not done this I would be sitting at a profit of 150,000 this is, of course, not quite the end picture, because I still have to pay another uh, 37,500 in my loan, or at least my loan interest. But at the very least, I am making profit. You're going to see this go up and down and up and down, depending on how well and how fast your trains are going to arrive. Because the trains are the real money makers. The other ones are just feeders. They feed the trains. And look at this, the trains are sitting at 228,000. The passengers, a little lower, 10, 5, 12, and 7,000. So they're not nearly as profitable. But this is really a good way to get started in 1850. Now, another way to get started in 1850 and uh, to accelerate this growth is to make sure that one of your towns is growing. It is already growing because I'm getting a pretty decent transport network. The public network or the public transport is going up. And because of that, the uh, initial population of 140 has grown to 196. And that's excellent news for me, because that means more people to transport and more profits. If you grow this town even further by providing more supply or more fuel in the case of Sutton, or in the case of Leclade, uh, more food or more construction material, you again grow the town bigger. Bigger towns, more people to transport, more cash for me. And of course, you're also going to be making money simply from getting the other materials in. The construction materials in this case, and the food. Keep in mind that every town seems to have different food requirements, or different supply requirements. These guys need construction and food. But a different town, like Boston, doesn't need food at all. They just want machines and tools. It appears they are very much an industrial area. So that's going to require a different approach. Now, in this game, and I'm not going to do it, but my next step would be to connect this farm to this food processing plant. And ideally, I would make a rail line that goes here and then uses the same rail line that I already have, split off around this section and turn that way. Then I'm going to have food be produced here. I could then have the food be brought from here to there, and then the it goes bigger. I could also have the food be uh, not just brought to Leclade, but also to Sutton, th seeing as Sutton also needs it. And with both Leclade and Sutton uh, getting more food, they will grow, and they will grow fast. And then again, it's going to mean more profit for your train lines. Currently, we are on May 20, 1853. In 1852, I did some investments for 95,000. Had I not done that, I would be sitting about at a profit of uh, 250,000, 240,000, give or take. This year, I am going to be running, I think, well, 250,000 should be attainable. Probably even 300. 
I still have a train that's not running entirely full. Train 2 over here. And I think that I don't need another train at the moment. Seeing as there's currently 21 passengers. And train 3, the big one, for 30 passengers is coming in. So that means that uh, this one's going to run, well, more or less empty, depending on how fast these people run to the train. Yeah, I'm going to have uh, 29 people... No, they were just too late. I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait uh, a month <laughs> before the next train arrives. This is a way to make money in 1850. It is not undoable. It is perfectly possible, um, ideally, by just tying two towns together. That has always proven reliable for me. The faster you get people from one side to another, the better it is. Just make sure that you don't just set up a train, but you also set up a network that feeds the trains. Because if you don't do that, then it is not really going to work. Because the trains won't have anything to transport. Now let's see how much money I make in 1853 if I don't spend anything. I'm sitting on 246,000. December 7. I'm still waiting for another one of those big trains to arrive. There you go, 300k. January 2nd, 1854. And in 1853, I made $300,000. That's just three years after the company got started. So if you look at the chart, initially we got a couple of big investments. 3.42 million. Then we did a couple more by buying an additional train. And then a couple of additional vehicles. First for Sutton and then for Leclade. And now we are making profits. This is how you do it. This is not the only way to do it, but this is how I generally start a game. And for me, this has always worked. Let me know if this was useful to you by hitting the like button or the dislike. If you have any questions about the game, then please let me know down below in the comments. And um, I hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. Good luck and have fun playing... Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> playing Transport Fever 2.